Hi, I'm Julie Miller and I'm a healthcare scientist. That sounds a bit like I'm letting into a secret, doesn't it? But to be honest, the way that people look at me when I say it, I might as well be. So I'd like to let you in on the secret of what healthcare scientists actually do. Healthcare scientists account for around 5% of the total NHS workforce. It's a lot of people that most people haven't heard of. So they can't be doing anything much of interest, can they? Well, between us healthcare scientists, we carry out over a billion different tests and examinations every year. And we're involved in around 80% of all the clinical decisions made in the NHS. So I'd say that, yeah, we are doing something not only interesting, but important too. Healthcare science careers are split into four main categories, which all have diff lots of different roles within them. As I said, there's about 60 different ones altogether. Broadly speaking, we have clinical bioinformatics, which is involved in developing and improving methods for gathering, storing and analysing biological data. Physical sciences and biomedical engineering, which help to measure what's happening in the body, devise new ways of diagnosing and treating disease and ensure that the equipment's working correctly. And physiological sciences that diagnose abnormal abnormalities in the body. And then life sciences, working mainly in labs where they look at prevention, diagnosis, monitoring and treatment of disease and are responsible for maintaining and running testing equipment. I'm going to start with clinical bioinformatics, because I won't lie, I don't think I fully understand it. But if you love computing and maths, this could be right up your street. Bioinformatics is a really broad scientific research field that combines biology, computer science, data science, mathematics and statistics to drive the analysis of the vast amount of data associated with modern bioscience. Only this last year, the coronavirus pandemic has shown that rapid data analysis and interpretation is much more powerful to help control the spread when that data is shared quickly and openly. Who knows where we'd be now if we'd had more data available earlier last year. Bioinformatics is often split into these three main areas, genomics, health informatics and physical science. Genomics looks at the masses of information developed from genetic studies of things like DNA, RNA and proteins, and is often used in research to develop more individualised treatment in healthcare for conditions such as cancer, Parkinson's disease or even COVID-19. If we can analyse what works well for a very small subset of patients, then we can organise the treatment to work better for others like them. Health informatics bioinformaticians look at generated data to see if we can improve the way our health services work. So recently, this might have included evolving virtual services for consultations when patients haven't been able to go into hospitals, or for staff when they haven't been able to visit patients' homes. Lots of the data you've seen as graphs at government press briefings will have been generated by healthcare scientists. Health informaticians are also responsible for ensuring that data generated is used efficiently and to the required standards so that your information doesn't get shared unsafely or illegally. Physical sciences Bioinformatics uses a more engineering slant to study and process biological data. That, um, they might create and maintain computer related interfaces to control specialist medical equipment, ensuring that they can talk to each other and most generally work in a medical physics or a clinical engineering department with specialist medical equipment. So if you like software development, programming, and are interested in how things work, this could be an area for you to consider. Overall, to sum up a really complicated field, bioinformaticians develop the equipment, software, and algorithms, but I just want to point out they aren't to blame for the exam algorithms last year, 
that process large amounts of medical data. They also analyse and interpret that biological data using software tools and algorithms. Physical sciences and biomedical engineering explore and record the workings of the body for diagnosis, monitoring and treatment. Here are just a few of the types of roles in this area that you might want to Google. Remember, all the search engines are available. Healthcare scientists working in the physical scientists fall into sort of two vague categories. Those that work closely with patients, for example, working with people with a disability to provide the equipment that they need. So they might be a reconstructive scientist or a procedure. Processed, oh gosh, can't even say it. Prophet, pros, work with prosthetics, designing and fitting artificial limbs on new noses or ears for patients who've had accidents or lost tissue due to cancerous growths, as no one wants to go to the shop without their nose on. You might develop electronically assisted speech. Remember Professor Stephen Hawkins? Or other robotic aids to help people. Or maybe you need to design a special corset for a patient with spinal injuries to enable them to lie still for radiotherapy treatment comfortably. Or you might have a clinical measurement role where you could be responsible for taking measurements in the theatre, an operating theatre, with the patient undergoing spinal surgery to ensure that the spinal cord isn't damaged during surgery as an anaesthetised patient can't tell you if they've got pins and needles or pain. You might even be a clinical photographer who takes photographs of an ulcer wound every day so that the doctors can monitor the healing process as it's really difficult to remember exactly what size and shape things were the last time you looked at it when you've seen five other similar wounds in between times. Then there's the healthcare scientists that work in physical science and biomedical engineering who work a bit more behind the scenes on all sorts of equipment for example, you might be designing the instruments and equipment to monitor patients' progress. You might be maintaining and servicing machinery such as a dialysis machine or a nebulizer for issuing oxygen in COVID patients. You could be making sure that the equipment used in radiotherapy treatment delivers the correct dosage, because any mistakes there could be really life-threatening. Or you could be a decontamination scientist who's responsible for ensuring that reusable medical devices and instruments and equipment such as endoscopes or surgical clamps are cleaned, sterilised and repackaged to high standards, ready for reusing in the operating theatres and other areas of healthcare. So next is physiological science. Healthcare scientists in physiological science might work in areas such as cardiac physiology, carrying out electrocardiograms or ECGs to check how the heart is working, maybe looking for signs of a heart attack. They might work in respiratory physiology, where they do diagnostic tests to assess lung function in patients that might have something like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. They may be optometrists, where they would uh, measure eye function, take images of the eye. Or maybe be audiologists, where one of the things they will do is assess hearing, or maybe balance function. How about neurophysiologists? These might spend time investigating the nervous system to diagnose and monitor things like epilepsy, strokes, dementia, or multiple sclerosis. One of my favourites, as who knew that people did this for a living, sleep scientists. This involves helping patients with sleep problems by monitoring them when they're asleep to look for neurological or respiratory causes for their difficulties. There are lots of other physiological science roles as well for you to look up, but almost all of them work directly with patients studying changes within the body to diagnose and monitor conditions. The final area I'm going to mention is life sciences. 
this is for all of your lab geeks out there, as this is where most of life science staff work. So although there's lots of different laboratory types that specialise in various bodily fluids, tissues and techniques, they all investigate diseases through blood and tissue analysis, for example. Maybe looking for diabetes or leukaemia, infections, cancer. But then they go on to monitor the patient's response to treatments. They might work to find out the genetic components of an illness, for example, by studying DNA, maybe for something like cystic fibrosis. They might carry out research to identify or assess how successful new scientific treatments for cancer and other diseases have been. You're probably all already experts in the language of pathology after 2020. And you'll have heard about PCR testing, lateral flow devices, Public Health England, microbiologists and virologists. You might even have come across the words like calibration and quality control. So you probably realise already that pathology labs have a lot more going on in them than you first thought. And that actually, there's a big team of specialists analysing your blood, wee, poo, spit, semen, any other bodily fluid or tissue you can think of. And it isn't the doctor or the nurse who conjure up those test results. Although if your sample goes missing, it probably is their fault and not the labs. It's not an especially glamorous job, but it is vital for over 70% of all clinical diagnosis in the UK. One of the few life science careers that isn't done in the laboratory is a genetic counsellor. The genetics laboratories examine cells for possible abnormalities in the foetus, usually in families where genetic disorders have been identified by a DNA analysis previously. They then do testing and risk assessments for individuals at risk from being carriers of these genetic disorders. The genetic counsellors work with the patients and their families before and after testing to ensure that they understand the risks associated with their conditions and for, uh, things such as pregnancy or malignancy. And they clarify the implications of having the genetic testing carried out. It can be a pretty big deal to know that you're more at risk of a disease than most people and not everyone chooses to find that out. So, having heard a little bit about some of the roles in healthcare science, what kind of people do you think would make a good healthcare scientist? Hopefully, you said anyone with an interest in science, computing or technology, and who enjoys learning. Science and technology are always evolving, so healthcare science roles are always also evolving, which makes them exciting and is the reason that I can't say exactly how many roles there are, as it changes as each new technology comes into play. So whether you're a people person, a Lego builder, a science geek, then there's a healthcare science role that could be just for you. There are so many fascinating roles, but one is likely to fit your personality. You can be quiet, loud, shy, extrovert. It really doesn't matter. To be honest, there's not one way to become a healthcare scientist. Each role has different entry levels, but most have support workers who come in and do what it says on the tin. They support the practitioners in their roles. So these support roles might be in an apprenticeship or a straightforward job. And for jobs at band two and sometimes band three on the NHS agenda for pay scale, you might not be expected to have any relevant experience, just a willingness to work hard and be part of the team and learn. From September, the government have introduced a great new way to study for healthcare science careers. They've introduced a healthcare science T-level for 
level three qualification. Oldham College will be offering the option of assisting with healthcare science as part of the health and science T levels coming in in September. And this will include around nine weeks of industry placement within a healthcare science department in the NHS at Royal Oldham Hospital. So you could be one of the first students in the country to get this opportunity and study a new exciting qualification that gives you a real insight into the NHS and the roles that you're preparing for. Most practitioner roles would expect you to have a relevant degree and then some roles might expect or require further qualifications like a master's or a professional doctorate but don't let that put you off as it's surprising what you can do if you're really interested in your work and often the NHS will support your further study. Most healthcare science degrees have a long placement on the job so you might find that you only spend around half your degree in the classroom or the lecture theatre and if you begin your career in a support role your department might even fund you through your degree as sort of an apprenticeship. This might take a little bit longer than going to university the normal way and you'll have to work at the same time but you won't pay any tuition fees and you'll get full pay for your role whilst you're studying even when you're at university. In the NHS apprentices are expected to have a job at the end of their apprenticeship too unlike in many industries so what's not to like? The NHS is a really open employer too. It's truly multinational, multicultural and a really equal opportunity employer and most staff don't have family who've worked in the NHS before. The recruiting policies are really strict and it's definitely what you know and who you are rather than who you know. We just really want the best person for the job. So hopefully I've convinced you that healthcare science is a career path that's worth looking into and you're ready to put some effort into researching it for yourself. Remember, independent thought and research are really useful attributes to show when you go for any interview, not just for healthcare science. And doing your own study to prove that your interest is real is a great way to go. To make life a little bit easier, I've put some website links on this slide. And one of them is a link to a video that talks you through the NHS careers website. It's not just for healthcare science and looking up courses on the UCAS website. There are other great resources on the careers video website as well. Have a look and see what else you can find out there. And if you've got any further questions that the internet can't answer, you can always contact me. So I'm Julie Miller and my email addresses are on this slide please feel free to email me with any question. Try and find the answer on the internet first, but I'm there if you can't. So thanks for making it to the end of the presentation with me and happy researching. Thank you.